Mabuhay and herzlich willkommen. My name is Suzy and today I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to pass your B1 TELF Prüfung. You need some tips and tricks to pass the exam. You are in the right video. This video is like a walkthrough for you guys. What I experienced, what should you do, what should you not do, and how should you prepare for your B1 Deutsche B1 Prüfung. Okay, for the B1 exam, the exam is split into three. Drei Teile. We have Hören und Lesen, Brief schreiben und Sprechen. The first step I want to give you guys is do not be on time, be early. If you really want to take the exam, you will never know what could happen along the way. Your bike could be broken, your bus comes too late, your train didn't come. So my tip is to be early and not just on time. Before the exam started, we needed our Ausweis or our ID. So you present your ID to the people who are there, they will check it and you can come in. The next thing that they will do is that they will confiscate your phone. They will put it in an envelope, a small envelope, or they would confiscate your phone. And the next thing, you won't have anything on your table. Your jacket, your bags, everything will be in front or at the back of the room. There will be nothing more on your table than your ball pen. I don't think you're also allowed to have a pencil. So you will only have a ball pen and um, your ID. We're also not allowed to have smart watches. This watch is okay. They would probably tell you to remove it and put it on the table. They want to avoid anything that deals with technology. You will most likely start with Hören und Lesen. For the start of the exam, they will explain to you what should you do, what should you not do. That's their protocol, they will always do that. And then they will play a CD on a cassette or they will play a recording and you will have to listen to it and answer on your paper. These topics can be about weather, these topics can be about Bahnhof, when you're calling a company and they will ask you when is the Öffnungszeiten. You will have to listen really carefully and I don't think that they will play it more than once. Read everything as fast as you can and all the answers, listen very carefully. With the tile lazen, with my experience, they gave me a whole paper full of vonos or apartments. Um, example, this apartment is this big and has this many rooms and you will have to match it with the person who was looking for that kind of apartment. So my tip for you is to collect all the papers that you guys practiced on and even on your books and read it, read it, um, cover the answers and read it and answer it again. And for a Teil Hören, look videos on YouTube on Teil Hören. That helped me a lot. And if you guys are interested, I will link in the description below what videos I use to practice on my hearing skills. So the total for Hören and Lesen is 45 points. To be honest, it wasn't really difficult. It was some, some were really tricky, some were really easy. And if you are really fleißig, if you're really fleißig, if you're really determined to, to pass and to to study for the exam, you will most likely pass. And on the same room, you will most likely do also your brief schreiben. So in my experience, I got two topics. The first topic was about, there was a water leak. There was a water leak in the apartment and I had to message the Vermieterin order the Vermieter. And it says there that I have to contact them, explain the problem that I have a water leak and that I need help. So the second topic is, so my friend broke his or her leg and I, and I want to send an email to him or her asking if she's okay, asking if she needs help for Einkaufen, if she needs help going to the doctor, if she needs help taking care of her children. It said there that she had two children. So maybe I could play with the children. I wrote down there, yeah, maybe I can play with your children um, because you, your leg is broken and just ways how to conversate with this person around this topic. I was really scared about the Briefschreiben because that's the part where I thought that I wasn't really prepared. And to be honest, I got 17 out of 20 points. One week or two weeks before the exam, write five briefs every day. Fünf Briefe jeden Tag. What I did is actually I memorized some lines that I can use in every conversation. 
Zum Beispiel, for example, ich möchte Ihnen mitteilen, dass, ich möchte Ihnen mitteilen, Komma, dass, Doppel S, bla 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 bla, Verb. And you can put in almost every topic. Another one is, vielen Dank im Voraus. So you can put vielen Dank im Voraus and make sure that the vielen Dank, vielen is klein when it's not in the first, when it's not in the first part of the sentence. Vielen, or if it's in the first part of the sentence, you put it big. Vielen Dank is always groß, big. Im, I am, voraus is big. So these are the types of sentences that you can practice on and memorize that you can put in any topic. And don't forget mit freundlichen Grüßen. You can put a comma. Um, usually the German people don't put commas before your name. So mit freundlichen Grüßen mit. Freundlichen ist klein. Grüßen ist groß. And then your name. The initials should be always big. And another tip for brief schreiben is that pick the easier one for you. Don't challenge yourself in this moment. In diesem Moment. Do not challenge yourself. Pick the easier one for you and just write at your best. Don't forget the big, große Schreibung, kleine Schreibung, Kommas, Punkt, Fragenzeichen, um, and everything else. So I just remembered that I had um, a lot of papers. So these are the papers that I used when I studied for the B1 exam. Wie wird das Wetter am Donnerstag? So they will tell you, yeah, Montag ist das und das. Am Donnerstag ist das und das. And of course you're gonna answer the correct one. And I just want to show you guys my notebook on where I practice my briefs. So I have this notebook right here. And as you can see, I practice writing my briefs everywhere. I'm not kidding. I, I was super scared of this. And I wrote every day briefs. So here is Liebe Paula. Um, make sure that you know how to write informal and how to write informal. So Liebe Paula is informal and we have here Sehr geehrte Frau Müller that is formal. So we have here Briefschreiben and I have here that. And here what I did is I copied every sentence four times or five times. So he said, "Get the damn herren," and I wrote almost every single day a lot of briefs. Yeah, that's how much I practiced for it because I was super duper scared for it. So, <laughs> isn't it a lot? Yeah, it's not yet done. So I have more. And I have here, I have there, and I think this is the last one. Yeah. So if you really want to pass, practice. And for the last is Sprechen. So in Teil Sprechen, you will have a partner. It's either a person from your class or a person from outside. For me, I wished I had someone from my class so that I would be more comfortable, but it wasn't given to me. I was given a partner from outside our class and I didn't know her at all. She came from Brazil. She, sie kommt aus Brasilien und sie ist, ich glaube, 40 Jahre alt. So she could speak really good German. Not super perfect German, but really, really good. And I was actually really, really lucky because I really wanted a partner who can really speak. Because <clears throat> if you are with a partner who cannot speak, it's a bit harder for you to make conversations. So before the exam, you can talk to your partner. Hey, what can we do? What can we say? Is it, is it okay if you do this? If you speak a little bit slower, if you speak a little bit faster or louder or clearer? You can always speak with your partner. When I came inside the room, there was two ladies on the table. And the first thing we had to do is introduce yourself. So this part you can really memorize. Hallo, guten Morgen. Ich heiße Susanne Samantha Stefanovitz. Ich komme von den Philippinen. Ich bin 23 Jahre alt. Um, ich bin Fotomodell von Beruf und ich wohne seit einem Jahr in Deutschland. Ich mache gerade einen B1-Kurs. Meine Familie so und so, mein Vater, mein, meine Mutter, meine Geschwister ist so und so. Und ich würde gerne als Wissen so und so arbeiten. So this part you can really practice. And let me let me give you an example. Ich mache gerade 
einen B1-Kurs. If you say, ich mache gerade einen B1-Kurs, das ist nicht schlimm. Das ist noch B1. Then they will ask you some follow-up questions like, oh, sie kommen auf den Philippinen. Wie ist es, wie ist es auf den Philippinen zu leben? They will ask follow-up questions to whatever you say. So your partner will do the same. So the next thing you will do is you will receive, you will receive a photo. Each of you will receive different photos and you will have to describe what is on the photo. I received a photo of a man in the middle and two kids on the side. They were reading a book about um, Bäume, trees. It's very nice if you say im Hintergrund sehe ich, im Vordergrund sehe ich, an der linken Seite oder an der, an der rechten Seite sehe ich. So whatever you see, ich sehe einen Tisch, um, der Tisch ist rot, der Tisch ist braun. And the next thing you are going to do is you're gonna plan something. They will give you a paper and a topic and you will have to plan something on the spot. Again, my experience, um, we were going to make an Ausflug. So um, you have to talk to your partner, hey, wir machen, einen Ausflug. wir machen einen Ausflug, where should we go, how much should we bring, what should we bring, who should we bring, what should we do there, and everything. So you have to prepare for that too. Another tip is that if your partner doesn't speak, just try your best to show the juries or the, the women, the men, show them your best that you can speak properly, that you can speak properly and you can speak clearly and you understand what the objective is. You can try to ask your partner, hey, was denkst du? Hast du eine Idee? Was sagst du dazu? Ja, ich habe einen Vorschlag. Wir können das und das machen. And another tip, if your partner speaks too much, try to interrupt them and say that you want to say something as well. And if you talk too much, if you are the person who talks too much, give your partner time to explain, to express herself, himself, because it's also not nice if you will just choo, 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 and your partner will just listen to you. That won't help you guys. So you have to be a team, you have to help each other, and just do your best. Do your best, be yourself, smile, and another tip that you guys should know that the proofers, the people judging your performance, they most likely want you to pass. They don't want anybody to fail as much as possible. If you show them your enthusiasm, if you show them confidence that, you, hey, I prepared for this and I really want to pass, they could most likely give you more points and just show them that you want to pass. Just show them, give them the energy that you want to pass and they will most likely see it. And most probably your first language is something else other than German and you're taking this TEL B1 Prüfung exam or Proof Prüfung. And another tip for me is speak German. Find um, people who speak German, your neighbors, um, people, at, people at the supermarket, talk to them, talk to your classmates in German. Do as much as you can to practice German, even if it's talking to yourself in the mirror. So guys, that is all for today. I hope you guys found this video useful and helpful. And if you have any questions, um, please comment down below. I would be glad to answer it all. You can also message me on Instagram if you have any questions. Und ich wünsche euch viel Spaß und viel Glück für deine B1 Prüfung. Und ja, bis nächste Mal. Tschüss.